Hey guys, how's it going? This is Kazi from CleverProgrammer.com. In this video, I want to bust a myth. Nobody's a self-made man. And uh, I'm going to tell you exactly why that's the case. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Yeah, so basically in this video, I'm going to be covering, okay, why nobody is really self-made, yeah? So what the heck do I mean by that? Well, everybody that pretty much gets anywhere gets there with the help of people. And anybody that tells you otherwise is um, kind of feeding you some bullshit there. And uh, you, you need to kind of call them out on it. You know, nobody kind of just puts on war paint and it just gets going. Everybody needs help. Now, for example, with me starting chess, when I started in the career of chess, I had a team. That's why I'm big on, even in one of my videos, I talk about unfair advantages. You know, be ethical, like Grant Cardone says, but be unfair, meaning wake up early, exercise. You know, you get these unfair advantages, so whether in whatever career you're in, you can get that extra boost. And another one of these unfair advantages is understanding that really nobody is a self-made man. So even when I say I'm self-taught computer programmer, that's a load of BS because when I was starting out, I learned from places like Udacity and edX and Coursera and um, whatever other platforms are out there, right? Online tutorials, Stack Overflow, YouTube, all this stuff. So I'm not really self-made. It was with the help of all these other people. When I started my career in chess, right, I became top 1% in the world in chess, and I still am. And this was not because I was just such a genius. I barely knew how to play chess, you know, even when I was 14. And then around the age of 14 or 15 in my high school, I just joined the chess team. And then there were amazing players there that helped me along the way that pretty much became my mentors. But one of the key things there I had to do was understand that you don't just become it by yourself. You have to be okay with asking for help. So I had to allow these people to be my mentors, right? You have to allow people to mentor you because then your success is effectively their success because you're giving them the right to help you be successful. And when you let other people be a part of your life, they're kind of connected there with you. So when you become successful, they're like, yes, you are successful. But on the flip side, if you are just being a completely evil person who's driven very selfishly to improve him or herself and not believe in other people and not let other people coach you, then effectively what you're almost doing is you're almost against them, right? There's almost this rivalry like, no, you're not better. I'm better than you, even if they are years beyond your skill level. Then they don't, they don't want, you know, they don't care if you succeed or not. And that's going to slow your progress down. That's going to limit that unfair advantage that you get in life. So be open to letting people kind of mentor you and put you in the right direction. You know, um, like I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Uh, I read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a phenomenal book. If you haven't read it, go freaking read this book. It will change your life. But it really opened up lots of uh, things for me. You know, what's important is finding out what you don't know. And a lot of the times when you're just specializing in something, you'll almost always miss the things that you don't know. So by going through this book, it really opened my mind and a few things clicked for me. And I remember one of the times, you know, I was doing a job, I was doing software consulting and I was making really good money. But, you know, when my parents or my mom had to go to a hospital and the bill for one night is $30,000, how does somebody who is doing a job able to pay for something like that? right? And this was something that was happening pretty frequently. And this was something that was happening where for my mom, we couldn't even get her surgery because we didn't have enough money. 
So that's not something that somebody who's doing a job can actually afford and do, right? I have to live my life and um, I have to make enough money so then later I could have a house and a safe future. How do I take care of other people, you know, if there's barely enough for me? So because I had read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he said, you know, be open to asking for help, you know, because he asks his uh, rich dad and poor dad in that book for help. So literally one time, one of these people I knew, he's he is really rich. And I literally asked him, I'm like, how do I get out of this cycle? It was like 2 a.m. at night. And I just woke up and I was like, what the hell am I doing? Like, I'm going to go on to live this mediocre life where I'm barely going to make enough for myself, let alone for other people. There are people in the world that are starving that I can't help. There are people who, um, you know, would like to get an education but can't. I wish I could help them. There are people in my family that need help, like physical help, uh, because they need to actually be hospitalized and I can't help them. And I can barely make enough to help myself. So I don't want to live a selfish life. I think it's very selfish to just be like, I just want to make enough for myself. You know, I think that's a very selfish way of living because you should have enough not just for yourself, but support other people around you. So again, back to the story, it was around 2 a.m. And I texted this person and I said, you know, I'm kind of sick of that and I don't want to be in that cycle. What is it that I can do to break out of this cycle to make enough for my family, to make enough for me, to make enough for other people in my life? or people even outside of my life that I could help. And it was like 2 a.m. I remember texting this to him and just making myself so vulnerable and open out there. And then, you know, and then I was like, oh shit, you know, why did I leave him this crazy message? Cause he was a friend and it was just weird to leave yourself so vulnerable and open to somebody. It didn't feel natural, you know, cause I'm not that type of person. I always wanna save my pride and ego and. I'd rather not ask for help. I'd rather just do it on my own. So it's a weird experience doing that. And I remember half an hour goes by and one hour goes by and I'm just getting this feeling in my in my gut like, ah, this is this just doesn't feel good to put myself out there like that. And then, you know, hour and a half passes and I actually get a message back from him and it was literally one word and he says business. And that was one of the life defining one of the life defining moments I've had in my life. And it was that kind of like Eureka moment, that mental switch. And I was like, wow, okay, so business will be one of those things that kind of helps you break out of it. Then I had to reverse engineer how I go about doing that. And, you know, for that, there was different kind of help. So like, for example, for computer programming, right? I found programming mentors. And basically what I was doing was I was swapping my chess skill. I don't think of money as just a static thing, right? You hoard it up and you save it up. And then like later, 60 years from now, you live a good life, but you miss out on all your years. I don't think of money like that. I think of it as like a dynamic thing. So meaning I didn't even think of money as money. All I thought of it was like, I'm going to trade my chess skill for programming skill. So if I made $70 one hour or $100 in one hour or $150 in one hour working and helping a client in chess, I would then use that money for one or two or three hours of a programmer's time to then uh, get the programming skill. And then once I realized business was something that was very important, I then had to get a mentor in business as well. So, you know, having a programming mentor, having a business mentor, those were the things that allowed my programming career to become successful and then my business at Clever Programmer to become successful. So what I want you to take away from this video is you don't have to start paying people if you don't have the money right now, right? But what I want you to start doing is then go out in communities where there are like-minded people, right? There's meetup.com, but if you're in another country and maybe meetup.com isn't a thing, like go out to where these people meet up. Maybe they meet up in some city nearby you. Um, you know, there's a event going on or a convention. Or if there's nothing going on, you know, try to travel to a different city. Or if you can afford it, a different country. But try to meet with these like-minded people. And if none of those options are feasible for you, try to find these people online. 
right? These communities exist. You can find a friend online that you can chat with. And then if you guys connect, then you can actually start doing Skype sessions or FaceTime sessions. And those don't really cost you that much, right? Google Hangout. And then you guys can connect with each other. So find somebody who is ahead of you, but understand that you have to make yourself open to receiving help. Ego will hurt you. Your pride will be the death of you. Let those things go. When you see people who are successful, it's easy to get there. You just have to model what they did. Ask for help. Because when you ask for help, then your success is tied with their success and they want to see you become successful. Hopefully this video makes sense. If you have any questions or something wasn't clear, please put it down in the comments below. I'll answer them for you guys. Other than that, this is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next video.